Hello friends, I hope you're having a good day. Thank you for joining me in my home and I want to go into your home. Better than that, uh, I, I pray that we can share some things that would touch your heart today. Did you know that if the wireless radio had been on, they would have known the Titanic was sinking? Cyril Evans, the radio operator of another ship, had tried to relay a message to Jack Phillips, the radio operator on the Titanic letting him know they had encountered an ice field. Wow. But Phillips was busy relaying pastor's messages and rudely told Evans to be quiet. So Evans just reluctantly, he turned off his radio and he went to bed. Ten minutes later, the Titanic struck an iceberg. Their distress signals were unanswered because no one was listening. Wow. No one was listening. Let's have a little prayer. Father in heaven, we're listening today. Uh, you have brought us here. Uh, there's people watching. There's people listening uh, because you have put it on their heart to do so. And so speak, Lord, because we are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. No one was listening. Open up your Bible. If you, if you have one handy to 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 1. There was a time when the priest of Israel had become so worldly that they had tuned God out. They weren't listening to God. They just were not listening to him. But God would not give up. He, he kept searching till he found a young man that would, that would listen to him. Let's, let's start here in verse 1, uh, chapter 3 of 1 Samuel. The boy Samuel... And by, by the way, Samuel means the Lord hears. Think about that. The word Samuel means the word hears. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There was not many visions. One, one night, Eli, whose, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel. And he answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. So he went and he lay down. And again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, and Eli, Eli said, I did not call you. I didn't call you. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not know the Lord yet. I want you to remember that. Samuel did not know the Lord yet. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and he went to Eli and said, Here I am. You call me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and he lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood there calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then the Lord said, speak, for your servant is listening. Speak because your servant is listening. Do you know what the very most important thing in the whole world that you need to learn? How to listen. That's right, friends. We need to learn how to listen. We do. We need to learn how to listen to God. We need to learn how to listen to our spouse. We need to learn how to listen to each other. It's just something we need to do. There's, some, there's not really anything more important than that. You see, when Samuel uttered those words, speak for your servant is listening, it, it changed his life forever. It did. And it changed yours too, friends, if we just learn to listen. There's so much that we can learn in this little story here from Samuel's experience. The first thing that we can learn here is that Samuel had to learn how to listen. He had to learn how to listen. Notice that here in our story here that the Lord had to call called on him three times. He didn't have a clue. God was speaking to him, but he didn't have a clue, friends. 
So you can hear, you can hear God speaking, but not ever realize it, that it's really God. Now, let me explain it like this. Let's use Webster. Merriam-Webster defines hearing as the process of the function or power of perceiving sound, specifically the special sense by which noises and tunes are revealed uh, and, and stimulated. Listening, on the other hand, means to pay attention to sound, to hear something with thoughtful attention and to give consideration. So someone, someone rightly said one time, so hearing is through the ears, but listening is, is through the mind. And I would even add to the heart. So uh, like for instance, we have a train here that uh, where I live at that um, when we first moved here, it just bugged me because it would just come and they'd lay down on that train horn and it would just go by several times a day. And, but, but now I've gotten so used to that train that even though I might hear it, I'm not listening for it. So a whole day will go by and Cindy and I, my wife will say, you know, I didn't even hear the train. Didn't hear it, didn't hear it today. I wonder if it didn't run today. No, it was still there. We, we, it was, we, we were still hearing the train, but we were not listening for the train. And so we just didn't even realize it happened. So can, can we do the same thing with God? Can we get just so busy, so caught up in our little rat wheel that, that, uh, that God, even though he might be speaking, we're, we're not listening to him. And so we, we don't even recognize it to be God's voice. Can we do that to our spouse in other relationships? Can we do that? So the question I got for you today is how can we learn to become good listeners? How can we do that? Well, the first thing that uh, we've got to do is that we've got to draw near. We've got to draw near. Uh, we, we've got to give our, our thoughtful attention. I want to use that word attention that we've seen in learning in Webster. We, we've, got to, we've got to give a thoughtful uh, attention. We've got to engage our mind. How about that? Um, we, 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 we might have to put down our phone. We might have to turn the TV off if we want to, if we want to listen to God or if we want to listen to each other. Uh, as, as we visit with each other. Uh, God says in James chapter 4, verse 8 in the Bible, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. That's like if, if I were to just be whispering something, you'd have to get really close uh, to hear, right? You'd have to get close enough where you could hear me. So that makes that, that makes, makes sense there. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, God sometimes, and we know it, it, he, he speaks through that small, still, quiet voice to us and everything. Now, did you notice something here uh, with, with Samuel? Did you notice where Samuel was? Where was he yet? He was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. So, so you see that he was near to God. And Eli was off somewhere else, off away. And, and so we get a picture here, a lesson that we can learn is by staying near to God. Keep, keep your mind engaged. Keep that open channel of communication going with God. Also, did you notice Samuel, 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 the young Samuel, he didn't really know God. Remember the Bible said he didn't know God. He didn't know God until he learned to listen to God. See, by listening to God, you get to know God, the real God. Now, here, here's something else. Samuel said, speak. Speak for your servant is listening. He, he said, speak. He communicated with God. He, as we go to God in prayer, that's another lesson. If you want to, if you want to, to listen, to learn how to listen to God, you've got to open up that channel and you can do that through prayer. Uh, also, as you come to God in prayer, notice he says, speak for your servant is listening. So you, it's something about coming to God, coming to him with a servant's heart, being willing uh, to be led by God, being willing for God to speak to you. Uh, I, I'm thinking of crying out to God from your heart saying, Lord, Lord, here I am. Speak to me. What do you want to share with me? What do you want to do through me? I get a picture. That's what God's trying to teach us here. 
Now, Jesus says that this is a must for our salvation. In John chapter 10, in verse 27 and 28, Jesus says, my sheep listen to my voice. They listen to my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they should never perish. No one will snatch, snatch them out of my hand. In John 8, 47, Jesus says, whosoever belongs to God hears what God says. Okay, um, so if you belong to God, you are listening and you hear what God says. And then it goes on to say, the reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. Basically, in other words, if you don't have any communication with God, you really don't have a relationship with him. That's what it's saying right here. You know, you, you really don't know him is, is what, it, what it said. If you don't have that communication, if you're not listening to him, if you're not talking to him, if you're, if you're not doing that kind of communication, you don't really have that relationship. You know, remember Samuel didn't really know God until he started listening for God. And, and that's so important. You know, that's how we get to know God, if you think about it. Or as far as that goes, anyone else. That's how you get to know anyone. <clears throat> you know, uh, time, the time, time spending communicating with each other. You know, is, is you t spend time communicating with God, uh, you get to know God. And friends, the more you get to know God, the more you're going to love God. And the more you get to know God, the more you're going to trust Him. You're going to trust Him from the heart. And, you, and you'll recognize it. That's kind of how it worked with Cindy and I. You know, uh, it, it was a two-way communication. She would talk to me and I would talk to her. You know, at that time, I was a, uh, when we first met, I was a CPA. And it was right in the middle of tax season. And I was extremely busy. But I want you to know, friends, no matter how busy I was, I made time to spend with Cindy. And I've often heard that said, is that we always make time to do the things that are really important to us. And it was really important to me to spend time with her. And we communicated a lot. Poor tax clients, because I was so wrapped up in her that my mind was way away from the, the income taxes that year. I can tell you for sure, my head was way away from it. And it did, I'll tell you something else. As I, as I spent time communicating with Cindy, as I spent time talking to her and, and listening to her and everything, you know, it didn't take long before I recognized her voice. Yes, I did. When she called, like when she called the office, especially if I answered the phone, she didn't have to tell me that it was Cindy. I knew who it was. I knew it was her. I knew as soon as I answered that phone and heard her voice that it was my sweet thing. And I was always glad to hear from her. So now, what is the main way that God has chosen to speak to us? Friends, the main way that God communicates with his children is his word. This is the living word of God. Uh, very audible thoughts of God put in word right here. These words are powerful, friends. And God has given us these words right here as words of, of, of life. And so we miss out on so much when we don't open the Bible, especially even at the beginning of the day, and let God give us some direction in our life. Now, another lesson that we can learn from our, from our scripture reading today from Samuel is that God speaks the loudest when we are the quietest. That's right, friends. Samuel, notice that Samuel lay quietly in the presence of the Lord. He, 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 he just laid there quietly. And, and everything, the world was turned off. We live in such a loud world right now. It's so loud, all the distractions, everything going on around us. You know, hurry is the death of your spiritual life. It really is. And far as that goes, any relationship, it really is. Please listen to this right here. We hurt our relationship when we don't pay attention to each other. We just do. Now, you know, the reason that most relationships grow stale and, and they get far away from each other is because we quit listening to each other. We, ju we just do that. You know, and whether, now this is whether, this is our relationship, whether your relation, relationship be with a spouse or a friend or even more importantly, your relationship with God. If we quit listening to God, if we just get caught up in our rat race, if we get so busy, what we're doing, we don't realize it, but we're tuning him out is, is what we're doing. Good relationships, friends, don't come by accident. They are grown. 
and even protected. You've got to protect your relationship. You really got to do that. You've got to be intentional about this. The very best advice I could give you right now if, if uh, for your relationships is you've got to keep paying attention. And because when you, when you, when you pay attention to someone, like when you pay attention to your to your spouse, when you do that, it's telling them, I care about you. You are that important to me that I am listening to you. I am focused in on you because you matter, because I love you. And and so think about this. I mean, isn't that how you fell in love in the first place? Right? That's probably how you fell in love. You you fall in love because you started paying attention to somebody that of all things was paying attention to you too right? Y'all started paying attention to you. Like husbands, all you husbands out there, remember, remember how much attention that you, that you, that you gave your wife, like right when you first met, maybe even before you were married, remember how much attention, like I could just picture uh, right now, like uh, you, you're driving up in a, in a place and you run around and open the door for her and things like that. Yeah. You, you could picture that. Maybe, maybe you, you, you know, whatever, whatever, concern her, concern you. You wanted to be around her always. You wanted to do that. Uh, if, if you, you, you said, well, what's, what's, what do you like to do? She says, I like to shop. And you go, oh yeah, I love shopping. <laughs> I love shopping. Uh, what kind of movies you like? Oh, I like Hallmark movies. Oh, honey, I like, I like Hallmark movies too. I could just picture it's going on and on. And we all do that, right? We all did that uh, here in the beginning. And you want to just know everything about her, everything going on in her life because you were very much interested. She had your total undivided attention. And you made time for her. You might have been busy, but you made time for her. Well, what about now, guys? How are we doing now with this? Uh, like, for instance, when you when you go out to the vehicle, do you run around there now and open the door for her? Or do you get in the car and say, okay, honey, let's go. We got to get out of here. We got things to do. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. And what about them Hallmark movies now? Mm. <laughs> Who's got time for that, right? Yeah, we got a football game going. See, friends, this is just what happens. We get busy. We get tied up. We get we, we got things going on. We start having babies. We got to go to work. We got things to do, places to go. Friends, it just, that's just the norm. It's called the norm of life. And if you don't watch it, you just got to get swept away with current going downstream. You know, it works the very same way with Jesus. It really does. You know, it's so easy to lose our first love with Jesus. We just get so busy uh, that we leave God out, out of our life. So if you want to keep your relationships growing, You've got to learn to be intentional to protect them. You've got to protect them. You've got to be proactive about your relationships, friends. That's whether a relationship with God or a relationship with your best friend or with your spouse. So you've got to actually, what you've got to do is you've got to learn to swim upstream in this crazy world that we're in. If you don't, it will drift away, friends. It will do it. It happens every day of the week in somebody's life. They just get so busy that they leave each other out. Okay, let's be honest here. Is it, is it, is it really, is, 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 is listening easy? No, listening is hard, right? It's really hard, you know? I mean, I mean, with everything going on around us, all this white noise that we have all around us, friends, it's hard to listen. You know, it's, it's really hard to do that. I mean, I've got to confess to you. This is confession time right now. I can't tell you how many times that Cindy has been just talking to me, talking, and she's just carrying on, and I'm going, uh-huh, 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 and I'm, I'm focused in on what I'm doing here, and, and she's got, finally she said, you're not even listening to me. <laughs> I'm busted. No, because my mind was a thousand miles away, friends. You know, and... I'm not the only one that does that. I'm sure some of you can relate to exactly what I'm talking about. You know you're probably nodding your head right now and, and pointing to each other, right? Yeah, probably probably so. But I want to share some information from the Bible from, from the wisest man that's supposed to ever live. Now, this guy had a bunch of wives, so he probably learned a whole lot, right? Uh, anyway, Proverbs chapter 18. Anybody get that? <laughs> 
Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 13. Listen to this right here. To answer before listening. To answer before listening, that is folly and shame. In other words, the wise man Solomon is saying here, that's just crazy, guys. If you answer before you even listen, you're going to get yourself in trouble like that, like me. Yeah. Friends, think about this. Think about it. At first, when you first met your, 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 your wife, when you first met your girlfriend or your whatever, they had your undivided attention. You were listening every word they said. It mattered to you. You were glued in. You were focused in. You know, and and, uh, and you were tuned in. You had your radio on, right? Yeah. And 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 what about God? Do you remember your first love? You remember when you first fell in love with Jesus? You know how how when you would hear the spoken word that it would just give you heartburn? It would, it would just thrill you to the bone? I mean, you couldn't get enough of Jesus. You wanted to praise Him. You wanted to worship Him. You wanted to read about Him. You wanted to study Him. What about now? What about, are you listening? Are you listening today to this message that He's given you? You know, it is God's plan, friends, that, that we that we that we treat each other like we're a servant to them. Like we're like we like we care about them. Uh, like like we we wanna we I'm listening to you. What's going if it matters to you, it matters to me. If it concerns you, it concerns me. That's we are we are to serve each other. Yeah, because we care and because we love. So it's God's plan. It's God's plan that we focus more, and this is hard to do, but it's part of God's plan for our life that we focus more on hearing than we do talking. You hear that? I mean, think about this. We've got how many ears? Two ears and one mouth. I think God's up to something with that, right? I think he must know something. He's, he, today, I think the message is open your ears to what your spouse is saying. And friends, this is very important here. Not only do you open your ears to what your spouse is saying, but open up your eyes to how she is saying it. How she is saying it. You know, this nonverbal stuff, that means a lot. I go up to my wife and I said, honey, I want to go hang out with my friends. Okay, go ahead. What's that tell me? No, she wanted to spend time with me, <laughs> right? So listen, not only with your ears to what she's saying, but open your eyes until how she said. In other words, pay attention. Listen to her. Listen to listen to her nonverbal communication there there too. And some of you know what I'm talking about, right? Okay. All right. Listen to this right here. James chapter one verse nineteen. Listen to this. This is going to help you out so much. Listen to the word of God here. James chapter one verse nineteen. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Really. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Do I need to repeat that? This is some powerful words of advice right here that could help you so much. It could save so many marriages out there. Brothers and sisters, take note. Take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Boy, I needed that so much. Now here's some uh, some more good advice. Philippians chapter two, verse three through five. Do nothing out of selfish selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Wow, that is such good advice here. Friends, this Bible right here is full of good advice. It's just full of it here. All right, let me wrap this up. Let me wrap this up. This is the way it is. Every relationship is either growing or it's growing apart. Fact of life, it just is. You have to be intentional about growing your relationship. You've got to invest in it. If you invest in your relationship, it will pay off dividends, friends. It will. And, and that's with your relationship with God or your relationship with anyone else. Now, have you, have you noticed that the, the relationship 
in the Bible between Jesus and his church. How does Jesus refer to the church? It's his love. It's his bride. It's his bride, the one that he cares about, the one that he gave all for. We can learn so much on how to have strong relationships through watching and reading about and meditating on the way Jesus treats us and the way that Jesus treats his church. Has your relationship right now, friends, gone a little stale? Is it getting a little bit cold? Whether that be your relationship with your spouse or your relationship with God. Well, Jesus wants to fix it. He wants to fix it. He wants to make it hot, not lukewarm, not cold, but he wants to make your relationship hot. Re remember the counsel he gave his bride uh, to, to the church of Ephesus? He talks to his bride in Revelation 2 and 3. If you, ain't got it, you hadn't did it before or it's been a while, go there and read that this afternoon. But he gives some wonderful counsel to the church at Ephesus when their relationship had went a little bit stale. He tells them in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 4, he said, look, you've lost your first love here. But friends, th this is what I love so much about Jesus. The relationship had grown stale. It had grown cold. But did Jesus give up? No way. No, he told him exactly what to do to fix it is what he did. And, 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 and friends, not only will this work in the relationship that you have with God, but it will also work in the relationship that you have with your spouse. It will do that. So listen here. Listen closely to what he says. In verse 5, he says, Consider how far you have fallen. What he's saying here is take a moment, maybe an hour, okay? Invest in that. And think about where you used to be. Think about how you used to love to take long walks with each other. How you love spending time with each other. Talking back and forth. Communicating back and forth. So, but now you're not there. So what do you do? You're not where you used to be. You know you need to be there. What do you do? It's very simple. He said, just repent. Turn back. Turn back to the things that you used to do. You know, he says, return to me, is what he says. Return to me. Get, get your head out of the phone. Get it out of the TV. Be intentional. Start, start intentionally planning to spend time with me. Set aside time every single day. Put it on the calendar. You can do that. That's just so simple, friends. That's where you start. You start the same place that you started at the beginning. You just start by paying attention to each other and talking to each other, communicating each other, sharing with each other's heart. That's what God tells us to do. It's so simple. It's really one, two, three. And friends, when you do that, God will revive the relationship. He'll revive that relationship with you. And if you make that first step uh, with your spouse, that spouse will come back to you. Jesus says, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. It's the same way with the spouse. So I want to, I want to leave you with a challenge. I want to leave you with a challenge right now. That, that you would spend a little time today and, and you would talk to God. You would say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Just set aside some time to communicate with God today. Set aside some time to open up the Bible and let him speak to you. And, and then you speak back to him. See, God speaks to us in his word. We speak back to him in prayer. Spend a little time doing that. I promise you, if you do that, God would take it the rest of the way. And second thing, I want to challenge you to, to just kind of spend some time thinking about the good old days with your spouse. And, and I want to challenge you to take that first step back toward your spouse. Spending some time. Protect your relationship. Let your spouse know that you care by spending some special time together, by paying attention to each other. Are you willing to give that a try? I promise you that you, that you will be forever thankful if you do that. Can I pray for you? Okay. Father in heaven, I thank you so much for the message that you have given us today. It's so important, Lord, that we need to learn how to listen. So Lord, speak to us. Speak to us, Lord, because we're listening. I pray for all the marriages out there, all the relationships out there. Lord, 
I know where mine and Cindy's relationship used to be. And I know what happened when, when we allowed you to come in and be Lord of our relationship. And I pray that you would come in right now, that, they, that, that those listening would take that first step to start listening to you and listening to each other so that you can set their relationship on fire. Thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Jesus loves you, so listen for him. God still speaks, we just gotta listen. Bye-bye.